I'm gonna put my prime glasses on so Kenny can see. Uh, no. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. <laughs> I got the prime glasses today on Monday. We have a guest in the waiting room. Cannot wait to get to this. This is an exciting Monday, an exciting week nine for us here at the All Day Everyday Show. Welcome in to the All Day Everyday Show with All Day AJ and Manny Ruffin. A beautiful week nine. Uh, we are so excited to be here. Jesus, we man. say every week that and every year that we do these reaction shows that I'm already getting foggy in here um, that like the the year goes faster when football's on because we're already past, you know, eight weeks. It's already been two months of football. If you are watching this YouTube video and this podcast on YouTube, make sure to drop a like, comment and do not forget to hit that subscribe button. So you are not missing out on any new reaction shows and YouTube videos this football season. Um, also, for our audio listeners on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, our loyal, loyal listeners, we know who you are. Drop those ratings down below. They do help us a long, long way. We do have for the a very special guest, and this is going to be a returning guest for the rest of the NFL season for three games to break down of his choice, our Monday guy here, Kill Fucking Kenny. Yes, Thanks sir, for being baby. here, man. We appreciate the hell out of you. This means a lot to us. How's everything going? How was the move? What's up, man? What's going on, fellas? Good to see you. Good to see both of you. Uh, I, I'm just I'm jealous looking at your studio. I miss having a, a banging studio of my own. Uh, still temporarily in Sea Isle City, so we've got the uh, we've got the JV setup going right here. Camera's a little blurry. We don't got the stuff in the background. I'm looking at two professionals right here, but <laughs> life's good, man. It's Victory Monday for uh, for Eagles fans. We're sitting atop atop the NFL at eight and one. It's hard to hard to complain. It's the um, it's it's what I call as as what what a sloppy game it was. But this I was calling you earlier the the Sea Isle City weapon, um, <laughs> for being down there for for like the summer and all that kind of shenanigans. Let's kick things off here with the Philadelphia Eagles now moving to eight and one atop yes, of the sir. NFC East and the NFC. A sloppy win for the boys for your boys for your team Kenny and your team Manny. But let's kind of break this down a little bit. A twenty eight to twenty three victory here. Sloppy win. Penalties towards the end of uh, of the game there. Jalen Hurts getting banged up, still comes back. Bradbury and Slay getting banged up. You saw Dallas Goddard go down. But now we get to talk about Dak Prescott as well and what happened where we look at him and he tried all he could to get this this win for him. He had the penalties down late, CeeDee Lamb snapping, and it just didn't go their way. And we can talk about all that we want to say about the Dallas Cowboys, but every time they play a very good football team, they fail to win. It was just like the 49ers. They can beat those those bad teams, the teams that aren't so great in terms of standings, in terms of roster wise. But when they play the big dogs, they just do not perform. What were your thoughts on this on this on this big divisional win? But also to keep these these Eagles as as one of the top dogs in the uh, in, in all of football. Uh, well, shit got scary. Clearly, um, <laughs> it, it just it's it's another one of those games where I, I feel like we just we couldn't get. Like our run game is just so dominant and we get a lead. We just want to milk the clock and just run the ball down your throat, long drives. And I felt like we had just way too many three and outs in the second half. Mm -hmm. um, and look, you got to give credit where it's due. Dak played great as as an Eagles fan. Obviously, I despise the Cowboys. It's so much fun to to make fun of them and to and to poke fun at Dak. But like, I think like all things considered, like Dak has been a, a, a very solid quarterback throughout his career. He played great yesterday. But I think all people are going to remember is. Uh, yeah, he stepped out of bounds in that <laughs> touchdown run. And it just, uh, you look how important that, that play ended up being uh, in the outcome of the game. The, at eight and one, it's it's probably one of the sloppiest, like weirdest eight and one teams that that, that I've seen in a while. Yeah. Like, uh, there's still a lot of issues on this team, mostly with with the secondary. I mean, we've, just, we've had the injury bug just really since week one. I think, uh, I think if you take all of our week one defensive back starters i don't think i think every single one of them has missed at least one game this year so the good news is we're going into the bye guys can get healthy uh and then and then the the gauntlet of the season really begins we, yes. we had to arrowhead against kansas city a little super bowl rematch on monday night football and then i think after that we have the bills cowboys again in seattle like it's this is where the schedule gets gets brutal but you I got the we niners the too niners no, in we, that stretch and, too it's just a big we, stretch and we get the niners right so i think Look, you, you got to be excited about being eight and one, but you're looking at like 800 pass yards almost combined from Dak and Sam Howell over the last two weeks. Like that is not a, a Super Bowl winning recipe. I don't want us to have to outscore every team, like it, make it like a race to 30 every game. But again, at eight and one, you can only complain about so much. I, I, I love this team and uh, we haven't even begun to peak yet. So I think it's it's we're only going up from here. That was a good point because we haven't we have not began to peak at all. And I've been saying it time and time again, every single week we go on the reaction show. It's not pretty, but I kind of don't mind that it's not pretty because these guys are getting battle tested every single week. The 129th iteration of Cowboys Eagles did not disappoint. This was definitely like top three most exciting Cowboys Eagles games. I don't know for some reason just how good both these teams are, the stars. 
I just getting to the bye week. We need the bye week. We need air. Hurts going down. Bradbury last drive. Slade last drive. Seeing them two come back in gave me so much pride and like just makes me love this team even even that much more. You are right about Dak. Dak has been consistent in the Eagles Cowboys series. One thing too, people, I was shaky about Mike McCarthy this year going into the season, but he did a good, I think he did a great job of getting C.D. Lamb involved. Had him out the backfield on some doing Texas routes, was able to get him the ball in the slot, obviously because he knows Slay's not going to follow him around. This game was incredible. I, 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 we make statements every single week. I think the statement that we made this week is there's different ways we can win football games. Sometimes it's going to be, like, for some reason, Brian Johnson, some weeks it's swift, 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 swift. Sometimes it's AJ, AJ, AJ. This week, I feel like it was, I feel like it, it just felt like we were going to lose this game. And time and time again, I think the continuity of this team, the leadership of Jalen Hurts, keep guys together, come up with big drives. I don't know. It's just another big week to be an Eagles fan. It feels fucking great to say we're the best team in football time and time again. And it's just the Bears, baby. You look and at dude, I, my, my bit. I was always going to say was, I, I just, I do think there's value in, in playing competitive games. I mean, mm-hmm. I felt like, you know, even at the end of last year, like we beat, it we felt like we beat the hell out of so many teams and we just, we hadn't really been actually tested. And then when Hertz went down, we lost both games with Minshew and it got to the point where in week 18, we, I think we had to win in order to, to, to secure up that buy. And like, I thought that was a good situation to be in, like give the guys an actual real tune up game heading into the postseason in a game that has a little bit of competitive nature to it. And I guess to a fault, We've played ourselves into games where pretty much all of our games have been somewhat competitive this year, minus minus a few, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. But let's get healthy and uh, let's let's you know a couple a couple of blowouts over the next couple of weeks to, to give the starters a little rest wouldn't you know certainly wouldn't hurt us. I want to ask you about one specific call that I had a lot of talk on Eagles Twitter. It was a third and three, fourth quarter. We throw the deep ball to AJ Brown. Kind of was a, a not the best pass by Jalen Hurts. People were saying we could have ran the ball there. I do kind of agree, but in the fourth quarter, our run game looked horrible. You do expect to get maybe two yards with DeAndre Swift there to be able to run the tush push after that. I don't necessarily hate going to our quote-unquote money play, which is hurts to A.J. Brown. I don't like it being a fly pattern. I would like to see like maybe a slant, maybe a comeback. But what did you think about that play, and what were your opinions on that? Like we had, we had so many, we had a lot of trouble moving the ball and mm. running the ball uh, in the second half. So I certainly don't mind it there. And look, I think when now when you're when you're eight and one and the offense has looked as good as it's looked from all of last year, throughout the last year's playoffs, and then throughout this year, I just think like I have a hard time doubting anything or any decision exactly. that this offense does. I just I I trust Sirianni. I trust Hurts to make the throws. And if our choice is run the ball or throw it to our legitimate MVP candidate, maybe you know, top two, three receiver in the NFL. I'm never going to complain about that. Now that it have to be like a go route, maybe yeah. not necessarily, but <laughs> again, like it's just like the, we're playing with house money here. I, I trust this offense to do literally whatever they want at any time. And uh, if it's not broke, don't fix it. You bring the point up of the, you know, your MVP player, your, your, your wide receiver out of AJ Brown there. Is that where you would rank him in, in, you know, top receivers in the NFL? I mean, we saw Tyreek Hill obviously in the travel of going to Germany and, and the argument of Tyreek Hill being number one. I, I think now after the statistics that we saw these past couple of weeks of, you know, multiple, multiple, multiple games of 125 yards or more, um, it's just incredible. I know obviously he didn't get there yesterday, but I think it's hard to not put him at number one in the NFL right, right now. Right. I think it's hard. Is that is that fair to say? It's close, right? I would I would say that it's close. Look, I'm an, I'm an Eagles fan, so I'm an A.J. Brown fan, and I'm also just, I have so much appreciation for, what Ty, what Tyreek Hill can do on the football field. So I think right now you can put him at comfortably one at one and two. Um, you know, with that with a healthy Jefferson, who knows where he slides into the mix. But I'm I'm cool with going, you know, one A, one B right now. I'm not ready to put one ahead of the other. It's I know it's a bit of a cop out. It's kind of like the like the Jordan LeBron argument. Just go one A, one B. I don't care where you have them ranked, but they're clearly one and two right now and there's a whole lot of separation between them and the next guy. You go into a huge stretch, like you said earlier, where our head, obviously the Super Bowl rematch we Obviously can't wait to see what kind of narrative is going to be behind that game and if they can go to our head and get a big win there. I don't know if you have some early predictions on on obviously no bias, but in a game where the Chiefs continue just to find ways to get scrappy wins, they don't look like that number one team like they always are, but in a game at our head against the Super Bowl rematch, is there a, is there a, a slight prediction that you can kind of shout out for what your birds are going to do next week? I can't even, can't even look at it yet. I want to see how we look health wise coming out of the bye, Post week. bye I, right. I, I, yeah I, I haven't i haven't seen like any really updated injury report coming from last night but i mean dude i'm excited there's i know one of the games we're going to talk about next but like the that'll be what week 11 like week the week 11 slate is going to be 
yeah. just just magnificent. And to cap it off with Super Bowl rematch, Monday Night Football, I mean, it's not going to get much better than that. But I, 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 you know, I don't mean to, uh, you know, blow the content here, but I, I got no predictions just yet. I'm just <laughs> to enjoy being eight and one. Yo, how bad did you shit your pants when that Jalen Hurts hit to the knee happened? Oh, dude, I it, thought it. I thought it was over, bro. I sunk so far down in my chair, saw him limping. That motherfucker is tough as nails, man. Holy fuck! Yeah, dude. My like, my heart was in my stomach. It's just uh, that's that's a moment I you just as a fan you never you never want to see, and you could. It's like you, you, your season is like flashing before your eyes. So thank God he's just an absolute workhorse. Thank God he's Sucks. healthy, and uh, let's keep him that way. Let's move over to our. C.J. Stroud game, the best rookie quarterback in football, setting records left and right. The Texans win this one 39-37 on a comeback game-winning drive from C.J. Stroud, setting a rookie record 470 and five. What a performance from this rookie. We were talking about it when Anthony Richardson came, Anthony Richardson came in, and obviously when he got hurt, it was, uh, well, we know C.J. Stroud's this guy, but I, I was more on the, on the wavelength of An- Anthony Richardson being the better quarterback. Now, obviously, you can't say that because Anthony's hurt. But C.J. Stroud is really showing that he is the best yeah. rookie quarterback. And he's really the franchise guy for the for the Houston Texans. What did you see out of this game here? Uh, there's multiple different connections that we're finding week in and week out of what C.J. has in his wide receiver room and even just his receiver room. Noah Brown, Dal- Dalton Schultz, Tank Dell, Nico Collins. You got Mechie in there as well. So many weapons for him to go to. And yet a game where Baker may Mayfield needs to find a way to get this win to have their hopes of winning the division. CJ Stroud just shuts the door on that. And doing all of this with zero run game, the Texans for the year are averaging 3.3 yards per carry. That's the third worst rushing attack in the NFL. So the fact that he's been able to do what he's done with zero help from the backfield, I think makes this all even more impressive, but what a game, man. Um, It's, it's hard that it's this early in the year. Like, this abundantly obvious what the right pick was in terms of the number one overall pick and the number two pick. And look, I don't want to dunk on Bryce Young right here. They're in different situations. I think Stroud is certainly in a, in a situation that is going to, I think breed success a little more, but I mean, I think it's pretty clear. Like if you went back in time, the entire (laughs) league would take Stroud number one overall, no questions asked. And uh, so much for the importance of that dumb IQ test. I guess they make they make draft picks take. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the S two cognitive test, and it was like they they leaked the scores, and Stroud got like an eighteen out of a hundred, and Bryce Young got ninety eight out of a hundred. Like it means nothing apparently because right. CJ Stroud is an absolute wagon. One thing that I thought was funny, um, and we can we can go back to Stroud here, but what an absolute cuck job to Baker Mayfield. Like Bro. before that last Stroud drive, the story here is, hey, what a great gutsy ballsy game-winning drive by Baker Mayfield in a must-win game. <laughs> yep, they're, yep. Da- they're, they're down uh, They're down three. I think he gets the ball four minutes left. And it gets to the point where they have third and 23 on their own 38-yard line. Just like, here's the game right here. 21-yard pass to, uh, to the rookie Palmer. And then fourth down, five-yard scamper from Baker to keep the game alive. And then uh, what would have been the game-winning touchdown pass to Kate Otten with 46 seconds left. It was just a, a, a truly impressive drive for Baker Mayfield. And no one will ever talk about it because uh, in the next 46 seconds, CJ Stroud ripped their hearts out. You're 100% right. Bake was snapping. And on that last touchdown to Kate Otten, that cashed my man's two touchdown ticket. I don't yeah. know if you saw that, but it was Cole Komet, Kate Otten, two touchdowns each for like five to win, what, 10 yeah, years? But it's something crazy. Oh, like who, my guy had an electric day. He had an electric day. <laughs> well, CJ go. Stroud comes down 40 seconds on the first play. They had to burn their last time out. I think it's runs. CJ says, no, I got Tank Dell. Dink, dink. Now, I do, I understand it's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and they're going to run that Tampa 2, cover 2. It's going to be soft. But, I mean, three straight plays, Houston just had the number on that defense, and they didn't get out of it. And and I don't know. Out of CJ Stroud, seeing that poise, you said the thing about him having no running game. He's also been the most blitz quarterback this year, and he's also been incredible against the blitz every single time. This kid's a goat in the making. We're really watching the generational transition of this player. I love CJ Stroud, Stroud so much. I'm so happy for Texans fans because of what they had to deal with. Had J.J. Watt, obviously had Deshaun Watson, thought they were going to be here. Went down here. Yeah. They had Davis Mills. Davis Mills probably happy now. He doesn't have to play football no more. I'm going to have to be a backup now. Good for the Houston Texans, man. And shout out to Baker Mayfield, too, because he's not going to get the respect he deserved for this game. He balled the fuck out. It's just a huge game for, for Texans fans as a whole. Because, Holy fuck. I mean, there's, this is a game where, like, even from a betting standpoint, if you look at it, like, I don't whoa, know. Whoa, whoa, This was another, this is not an over, bro. Yeah. It's not an over, <laughs> like, bro. We talked two weeks ago about the, it was the Browns and the Colts. And and, and Manny's whole, whole clip was like, 
you know, RIP to the unders betters because who's going to pick an under in this game with with a big time defense out of the Browns? Not even that there's big time defenses here in the Texans and the Bucks, but I don't know if there's a lot of people out there. Forty forty said fo- like forty points apiece for the Texans and the Bucks in Houston. Um, but just like you said, you just got to be happy for Texans fans and especially for CJ Stroud. And there's another stat here that um, CJ Stroud has more touch more passing touchdowns than Kenny Pickett in thirteen less games. And on this show, we are. Uh, statistically consistently Kenny Pickett haters so to see a stat like that is incredible and I don't know if you have any thoughts on that there I mean it's just crazy man you talk about like the overall total in this game like the pulling this from from Matt Jacobs on Twitter like the theme of the year has been unders and if you're like a prop better like myself like it's just unders are are cancer to to touchdown props like this week unders were 10 and 3 since week 5 they're 47 and 23 since week 3 they're 67 and 35 on the season, they're hitting at 60, 61%. And then in primetime, it's even worse. In all primetime games, the under is 21-7. and seven. And in the last 10 primetime games, it's 9-1. and one. So Jeez. it's the, the theme of the year has been under. But then I feel like in the games that go over, there's like one or two games a week that just there's 95 points scored for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> the one was that Colts-Browns game yeah. that we just talked about. And then, and, then, and then this week, man, it's just like it's, it's averaging out the, the point totals in this weird way. But it just we have these outlier mega over games mixed in with under crap and it's it's just it's it's been it's been a weird year i think from from a total standpoint but uh yeah man if you're a texans fan you got a lot to be excited about like dalton schultz went for 10 130 in a touchdown yesterday and he was like your fourth best player on offense so uh things are looking up for the texans the stroud boys are are rallying it's it's man good for you guys you give you you touch on the primetime unders here as we move to the uh, Bengals and Bills on yeah. primetime last night. Huge win for Joe Burr and the Bengals, twenty four eighteen. And and Joe Burrow, we're now learning. He, he was asked at the end of the game in the sideline reporting, saying, "Well, how do you feel? Like, it, how do you feel now compared to what you did at the at the beginning of the year?" And all he said, "I can run. I can run now." Yeah. And when you have the confidence from Joe Burrow, I, I think this is one of the scariest teams in the AFC and the NFL when Joe Burrow's healthy and 100. percent Big win for the Bengals, but also you look on the Bills' side of it. The Bills needed to win this game Ooh. for division hopes. The the Dolphins already lost in the morning in Germany against the Chiefs, and and even though they already beat the Dolphins, they lost to the Jets. This is a big game that they got to win to keep those division hopes alive, and that's just. For me, as a Bills division future better, I needed the Bills to win this game. But Joe Burr shuts the door on that. Big win, 24-18. What are your thoughts on this game? Um, obviously, I saw your, you had the Jamar Chase and that, that, I think it was that plus 3,300 lay there. You had the Joe Burrow rushing yards just missed by seven rushing yards there. And then Jamar Chase not getting the end zone. What are the initial thoughts after this big win for the Bengals? Uh, Joe Burrow was back. We got shafted, too. He had an eight-yard rush, I think, in the first quarter that got that got. Uh, negate it door for an offensive holding call, and that oh ended up being like those eight yards would have would have would have would have cleared a good amount of money. It is what it is, dude. The league is just more fun when when Joe Barrow was back. Like there was this, like the the first couple weeks of the season, it, it, it there was just um, like this awkwardness, right? Because one, the under train had already started. The first few weeks of the season were just sloppy across the league, and you had a hurt Joe Burrow, and the Bengals looked atrocious. You already had Rodgers get hurt in like the, the, their fourth snap of the year, and it was just like. There, I think this 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 cloud sort of hanging over the league, and I feel like we're getting a little bit of sunshine as a star like Joe Burrow is is looking like a star. And last four games, he, he he's looking the part. They're four and zero in their last four. Uh, in those four games, he's averaging two eighty three yards a game with ten TDs and two picks. Like Joe Burrow is back. Uh, this offense is humming for like ninety five percent of the game. I feel like they stall out in 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 random parts, but for the most part, I, I like what I'm seeing here. The defense, it, I think it, the, the jury's still out here, and that's going to be the deciding factor as to whether or not this team gets back to the Super Bowl. But this team just has it right now, man. Joe, he's a natural-born winner, and when he's playing like this, they believe that they can beat anybody. And dare I say, on paper, they don't match up quite quite with the Chiefs just yet, but I, I think the Bengals right now would be my pick coming out of the AFC. I just think that Ooh, Joe, Joe like Burrow, that. got he's got the juice. You know, he, you know, he was, you know, they went to the Super Bowl and then they were a really bad late hit penalty from going to the Super Bowl again mm. last year. I think these they're on a mission this year and uh, it's 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 Joe Barrow versus the world. And remember what you were saying about the primetime unders and all how the primetime game has been so bad. I had so much hope about this game. And Joe Burrow comes on the field first job, gets a touchdown. Wait a second, 14-7. Josh. 14 7. Fir- Josh Allen answers. In the first quarter. Then Joe Burrow answers again. I'm like, oh, this was the prop gold mine. I was scared because it's a primetime game. I didn't bet all the props. I'm like, look at me. Then they just stall out. 
And I have a question for you about this Bills offense. Why doesn't Ken Dorsey run the ball? We don't run the ball at all, Ken Dorsey. I understand it might not be the strong suit, but I mean, the Bengals, everyone in that building watching the games just knew what was going on every single drive. Josh Allen's going to drop back. Josh Allen's going to drop back. And not even give James Cook a chance. And I don't know. Just the inconsistencies with that, I think, could have helped the Bills offense propel in this game a little bit more. I don't know. The the Bucks backfield has just had no rhythm. I mean, the, coming into the year, it was a revolving door between James Cook, Latavius Murray, and, and Damian Harris. And and I get teams wanting to cycle in running backs, especially early in the year, keep keep yeah. guys fresh, keep guys healthy. But I think there's also value in just getting guys in rhythm. And I feel like James Cook is clearly the best of the three backs. He's the youngest. There's the the most excitement there. And I just he hasn't really gotten into any sort of rhythm through throughout the season. And this game does not really play into it. I and mean, the Bengals have a solid rush to begin it's with, and then. They were they were trailing by a touchdown or two for the majority of the game, and at some point, like you just you know, your your second and six handoffs are just going nowhere. They <laughs> they abandon the run, and I know it's it's kind of like an archaic thought of you know establishing the run in football, but like it, it it's it's clearly so important to the health of of a, of the the rest of the offense. And again, there just hasn't they just haven't had that this year. And Bills fans have a lot to be worried about, man. I mean, again, they were one of the favorites to come in winning the Super Bowl. You have to give them at least a bit of a pass for some of the defensive issues. The injury bug is really, really killed them. Like it's not, again, as an Eagles fan, I'm complaining about our secondary. The Bills have had far worse. (sighs) Travis White going out for the year, arguably the best cornerback in the NFL. Matt Milano getting hurt. I mean, those are two, like, they're two of the most, two of the five most important players on your team, if not more. It's no surprise that there's been a struggle since those guys have gone down, but uh, if I was holding a Bills division ticket, uh, I got to be honest, man. I'm, I'm not. I'm not sure how good I'm feeling about yeah, that. Yeah, I'm, I'm Bills, not feeling good the about Bills it. Bills are minus one ten to make the playoffs. I know it's getting a little scary now. I want to shout out the the moonshot for this play here. Dalton Kincaid, twenty five or more receiving That's yards serious. in both half at plus six fifty, and that just takes us over into Dalton Kincaid. This is a rookie in back to back games. Eleven targets in this game. I have him in, in multiple fantasy leagues, and as a fantasy owner, and as a better for anybody in the moonshot, this is just a, a fantastic play I can't shine more light on this kid and and the Titan that they found let's not like let's not forget they also had Dawson Knox who is not a bad tight end it's not like we're looking to draft another tight end Dalton comes in here and says this is this is my position I'm the number one guy and you're gonna find me at 11 targets every single week just a huge performance there and obviously a great cash at, at 650 for B Matt Kenny and the boys at the moonshot I uh- Back to back weeks too, man. Again, it's probably the really the, one of the very few uh, positives from uh, the betting world yesterday. But Kincaid plus six fifty for twenty five <sighs> ETF. Back to back weeks, he's just a wagon. And with with Dawson Knox hurt, man, they, all the targets are getting funneled to him. It's very clear why they burned a first round pick on this guy when they already had a pretty good tight end in Dawson Knox. The kid is the real deal. Uh, he did. He did, I think, sell a lot of people's tickets by, like, that fumble yeah. essentially ended the game. Like, if they <laughs> score there, it puts a little more pressure on Cincinnati to, you know, to, I think, be a little more aggressive on offense. And maybe it just it keeps the game alive. When he fumbled it there, it essentially iced the game. And it was, you know, it was run the clock out city after that. But the kid's the real deal. And uh, I would be stunned if we got anywhere near that price on him going forward. I mean, he... In fantasy, he's got to be tight end number one, right? If he's not one, he's yeah. got to be close. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And and just uh, last few quick thoughts here. Um, would you, I know you said about the, the Bengals being, you know, possibly the top in the AFC. Would you take them over the Ravens now in, in the last couple of weeks that we've seen? We saw them blow out the Lions. Sloppy win last week, and then you get a big win here, 37-3 against the, against the Seahawks. Is Are they a team to look out look out yes. for over the, over the Bengals? Are we still going to... Put the scary Joe Burrow, healthy Joe Burrow, above the Ravens. It's close. I mean, the the Ravens are the real deal. I think the Ravens are one of... I think there's maybe four, at most, five teams right now that could win the Super Bowl, and the Ravens are absolutely one of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have they dismantled the Lions, and then they just dismantled the <laughs> Seattle Seahawks to what would be playoff teams right now. So, again, the Lamar Jackson record versus the NFC is like is weirdly laughable. He just does not lose to the NFC teams. And they they squeaked out a win against the Bengals in week two against the banged up Joe Barrow. So I'm very excited for their, again, I think they're in two weeks, they, they play in Baltimore. So that's going to be a very telling game. Like right now, I think the Ravens might be better, but as the year progresses, Barrow gets more healthier and the offense just gets in more and more rhythm. I still think when it's all said and done, I'm leaning Bengals, but they're far and away two of the best teams in the NFL. And last thing here, I want to, uh, as a Giants fan, I do have to ask this question. <laughs> um, you know, just 
very abysmal performance uh, <laughs> again. And it's just a harder and harder team to watch every single week of football after last year. And when I say it all, you know, I've been saying it for the past couple of weeks of this football season. The excitement into the season, and now you look at them now, it's just, it's just laughable. It is unreal how you can go from here last year making the playoffs, winning a playoff game, and then an absolute complete yeah. switch. <laughs> and now Daniel Jones is done for the year. ACL signed a $160 million deal, $82 million guaranteed, $40 million a year. There was the $35 million in incentives. Now there's rumors going out that this was his last game potentially played in a Giants uniform uh. with Drake May and Caleb Williams. Do you think there's a possibility that after a $160 million signing that the Giants would really look to draft one of those two guys? If you guys get one of those picks, uh, I don't know how you don't. It's Look, I, I don't envy Giants fans. You got your two Super Bowls. You 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 made your deal with the devil, and now you're you're reaping what you sow because it's <laughs> it's going to be tough sledding for Giants fans for 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 the next couple of years. What you guys did wrong, the biggest mistake Gi the Giants did was uh, winning a playoff, making the playoffs, and then winning a playoff game last year, and giving the fan base this like this misguided sense of hope. Like Thanks. coming into the year, the Giants, I think, were the youngest team in the NFL. You had like I think two rookies starting in your secondary to start the year, like. <laughs> There shouldn't have been any hype coming into the year, but you're coming off a, you're coming off a, a playoff win. You got Saquon healthy coming into the year. You just gave your quarterback a bunch of money, and out of nowhere, you're in a New York market, and expectations are going to be like abnormally high to begin with. But like this team wasn't really on paper supposed to be that great, and they went from not that great to total utter embarrassment in really in the fashion that only a New York team could do, either the Jets or Giants. At some point, you guys will figure out that you need an offensive line. You haven't had an offensive line in like 15 years, and <sighs> that is the root of every single problem that this team has had since your Super Bowl wins, and for whatever reason, you guys just refuse to fix it. Yeah, that's, ex that's exactly I, can right. Can I ask you one question, Kenny, before you get out here? Again, I'm sorry, my fault. But the whole season, this Bijan situation in Atlanta, it started right. off with like fancy guys and, and betting guys kind of having the biggest take on it. And now I see that it's fully Atlanta fans and fans across the NFL kind of like, what's going on down in Atlanta? Arthur Smith with B. John Robinson. As a, I mean, you're a gambler guy, fancy guy, just all around NFL guy. What is your take on what's going down there in Atlanta with B. John Robinson and Arthur Smith? I have no idea. I, I can't <laughs> even begin to wrap my brain around it. Like, it, I, I get it. Uh, like Algier is the bigger back. If there are certain situations you want to give him a crack, that's fine. But like, it's. It's it's like Bijan is in purgatory and he did something wrong and Arthur Smith is just is just weirdly punishing him publicly every single Sunday. Like Arthur Smith is one of just the most perplexing coaches in football. And what's what's weird is that like like this Falcons team is just very underrated. Their defense mm -hmm. is legit. Uh and Heineke at least gave them some some serviceable quarterback play yesterday. So like like this team has actual potential. I just think Arthur Smith is getting in their way and like it was I think it was the wrong choice to draft Bijan where they did anyway, but like you made your bed, lion it. You drafted yeah. the guy, give him, and you know, running backs are in the unique position where like rookie running backs and you know, first, second, you know, first, second year guys, like their NFL prime is their first, their first two years. Like if you're going to use a first round pick on like the probably the last need that your team actually needed coming into the year, <laughs> then you better be force feeding him the ball 25 <laughs> touches a game. And the refusal to do so, which has cost them games. It, it just it's it's mind numbing. So if I was if I was a Falcons fan, uh, I would already be depressed because I was a Falcons fan. But I would be even more <laughs> depressed watching our star running back just not get touches. Arthur Smith's got to tell the boys to get some carries or or make his son do it. I don't know if you saw that video. But. <laughs> that the, the video with his, where awesome. his son is his son is giving the ball to Bijan more than every you. time. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> Kenny, we appreciate your time today in these three games. Excited to talk to you uh, for the rest of the season on games that you choose. We appreciate it. Uh, have a great day down in Sea Isle, and we'll talk to you next week. It was a pleasure, boys. Talk next week. Hell yeah, baby. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, Kenny McGinnis. Unreal, unreal. That's fire. I can't wait nah, to do that you know every I'm saying? Nah, some week. teams you bring in. You, you remember, remember the 2017 Eagles? You, I don't know, 2017 Eagles. We were on like Chris Long, like Garrett Blunt. You get some new energy in the room. I think the reaction series got some new energy in it. It does, it does. And you know that's what, what we saying? need. We needed some life on the you know show. Change some things up. Get some guys in there. And, and it, it's also good because we get to hear more of the analytical sides from these guys. It's not all just betting. We can hear their actual takes and what they feel from, you know, from each NFL game and, and how they're watching these games, nah, yeah. let alone just I, the That's why side. I like that you asked him that Giants question because you asked that Giants question that's what made me think that. and that was Giants a good question. point too because for, for the betting side of it too uh, um, you know everybody wants to got minds bro like yeah. just because like just be it's not just punching numbers on the screen when you go on a fan duel you know what I mean these motherfuckers got minds
All right, let's keep it rolling here. In week nine, the Chiefs in Germany win a big one, 21 to 14. They were up 21 to nothing at half. The Tyree Kill, like, strip fumble with the crazy lateral, unreal play. And you're up 21 nothing at half. And then a really slow, slow, slow second half. You give a chance for the Dolphins to get back in this game. I don't know what our guy Tua was seeing on that final throw to try to tie uh, the game there. Maybe it was miscommunication. 100%. It was option route. It was option route. It was option route. Damn, we got to connect on that one to go tie the game. A, a, a nice win here for the Chiefs, but not a like a, a dominant, scary, this is the Kansas City Chiefs type of win. I Maybe it's the Germany well, play, but a good win there. Well, well to, to the Central Wilson throw, I, that was an option route, miscommunication. You hate that miscommunication happens right there. What the fuck? Um, one thing, too, I had Raheem Mostert yards up to 90, man. He was in the first half. Finished with 85. What the fuck? Remember I sent you that shit. But one thing about the Chiefs that I'm liking, yo, this defense is gritty. Tough. Winning them games. Look at the Jacksonville game. Jacksonville, I think they scored nine points. Look at this game. You got the Dolphins. Dolphins only scored 14 points. I mean, we got to start talking about this Chiefs defense. I was trying to shed in late earlier in the season about... Is Mahomes going to be able to get him over the hump? Is he that guy for real? This, that, and third. And I was talking crazy. And now, it might not even matter. They might have one of the best defenses or most underrated defenses in the league. And this was, the, honestly, for me, the biggest story. I thought Jalen Ramsey being here, Miami going to, to Germany early was going to be a huge effect. And Chiefs just laughed all that in the face. It don't matter. We could pull up. We got Andy Reid. We watched the film when they played the Eagles. And once you shut down the run with the Dolphins, they just abandoned it. And it's just, it's up from there. They try to play. They, I feel like with the Dolphins, they try to get too much back in one drive. You know what I'm saying? Because, yeah, a Tyree kill, 70-yard bomb over the top. In a 21-7 game, will change the game. I do agree, but you can't always get it back in one pop. Taylor Swift wasn't at the game. Bro, I was just gonna say, <laughs> do I have to come back on my take from two weeks ago and say, I guess, I mean, I guess I was dead wrong. Because when Adam Schefter, and everybody saw the clip, if at, when Adam Schefter said facts are facts when she's in attendance, he's getting over 100 yards a game. Well, there's back-to-back weeks where he was not, where she was not in attendance, and he went for 26 yards or 29 yards, and now three catches on seven targets for 14 yards. So, uh, Taylor Swift, you could have spent the week with your boyfriend in Germany, and maybe he would have went for 100 and a touchdown, because I bet him to get a touchdown, and that obviously didn't happen. So maybe I have to um, take away and, and and go back on my take on Taylor Swift being at these games. I guess we need, you know, ESPN and CBS and all these big networks to start covering Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey even more than they kind of, you know, stopped, I guess I should say. Um, yeah, just unbelievable at this point. Um, we still have yet to see, every week that we talk about the Chiefs, we still have yet to see who's going to be that other receiver besides Travis Kelsey. And we're just, we're not, we're not seeing it. Um, it's it's week in and week out. It's a great point that you bring up with the defense because the defense for Kansas City is really what's what's giving them these opportunities to have a shot at winning these games. Because right now the offense is not that powerhouse number one scary Kansas uh, City Chiefs teams that we know. Mahomes, is, uh, this is going to sound like crazy riding, like insane. But Mahomes is in his like 2015, 16 Tom Brady bag when it was like Kevin Hogan. Like we ain't had the receivers like that. The defense was tough though. We had a little bit of running game, but I wasn't like making spectacular plays, but I was making all these little mid-level guys look very formidable. Now, it's only week nine. You know what I'm saying? So what I'm saying is by the time we get to 17, divisional round, conference championship round, I don't know if the defense can keep keep this team afloat the way they have been. Mahomes, those guys get a rhythm down the stretch. He might, he really might be on some ghost shit with this team down the stretch because they look like the best team in the AFC right now. Obviously, we talked about some teams that will have to say about that, but... My yeah. fault, Pat. I know my we bad. gotta start talking about we gotta I'm start, saying my bad. Just bad. like that clip from last week, we gotta start doing a, a AFC ranking every week. Every single week because it's now <laughs> changing week in and week out. Like we did say, it's on a week to week performance based Facts. you know. So uh we'll see as we go down the stretch here. Let's move to the Browns and the Cardinals in Cleveland. Deshaun Watson and the boys in Cleveland in Orange win this one twenty seven to nothing. The Cardinals, at least I can say that the Giants are better than the Cardinals. And the Cardinals move to one and eight. The Browns are now five and three. And let's not like forget about this AFC North division. We got three teams at five and three, and then you have the doghouse of the Baltimore Ravens. Great take. Big win, first game back for the Browns. Obviously, you know it's the Cardinals, but you want to blow them out, have no stress. You know what I'm saying? Because that AFC North is insane and some of the matches i wish i would have said the tweet but some of the matches that are coming out of that north down the stretch are going to be crazy 
every team's at least two wins, two wins over 500. Every team at least has a 600 win percentage. Like that is just not normal. I was, see, my Cardinals. It was Josh Dobbs. Always was. It wasn't the Cardinals. It wasn't the Co- It was Joshua Dobbs. Never was Kyler Murray. We, it, it was never Kyler Murray. It was Joshua it was, Dobbs. I hate no offense, JJ Watt. It wasn't JJ. <laughs> I'm playing. <laughs> That's a crazy strike. That's a crazy strike. But it, I want to put some respect on Josh Dobbs. And there's a game we'll get to later about him, but I'm going to keep it on 100. That spread was 13 or something like that. First of all, if Josh Dobbs is the Cardinals quarterback, that spread's not 13. And second of all, if even if it was 13 and Josh Dobbs is the quarterback, they covered. Money My line. fault, Josh. Good Money win, line. Browns. Good win, Browns. Good win, Browns. We'll keep it with the AFC North as well. Our Thursday night game, not too much to say here. Steelers win this one at home 20-16. to 16. Scrappy, scrappy win down the stretch with the interception late in the red zone inside the 10-yard line against Will Levis. Uh, the, the, the throw before that should have been picked as well. I know, again, it's hard to talk about these Thursday night games for all our listeners and watchers out there. But let's try to think back. We're in, inside the 10-yard line. Will Levis has a chance to win this game for his team. Go his first road win, back-to-back wins as a starting NFL quarterback. They do not get the job done. Mika Fitzpatrick, let's not forget what he said in the game-time huddle, pregame huddle. He says to his boys, look, we're not letting this rookie come in here at home, win his first road away game as a rookie in, in, our, in our house. That's not happening. And the Steelers did just that, 20-16. to 16. But Will Levis, like... Couple turnovers, couple bad throws. We're starting to see like the struggles of what it is to be an NFL quarterback and adapt. Again, it's only two games, so let's not overreact with them. He's still going to be a good quarterback, and I still think he can run this team as the quarterback moving forward for the Tennessee Titans. Twenty to sixteen win for the Steelers. Yeah, I mean, I think this game showed that I think he should just be the quarterback moving forward, even though they didn't get the W. They just look way better with him under center. They got to start. I cannot believe every season the Steelers team. Or fans be questioning Mike Tomlin. Again, we're five and three. Again, we have a chance to win the North. Again, we look like a playoff team. Again, our roster sucks. It's like, like we cannot be Mike Tomlin is a goal. He should have got his goal. If they make the playoffs this year and win a playoff game, I think Mike Tomlin should get his gold jacket. Like instead of getting the instead of getting the Gatorade dump on him for winning the playoff game, he should get the gold jacket, man, because he's incredible. Good to see Deontay Johnson back moving and grooving, getting hey, back in the end zone. Well, that's that. Two years. Should have insta bet him when they were talking about the narrative. I know. One thing that I'm not going to overreact to, but I'm going to just have to set some line up because I like George Pickens. Didn't have his best game. Deontay Johnson gets in the end zone for the first time in how long? And you see the clip. Two years. Just walks off the field. Doesn't congr- I, I probably congratulate him on the, at, at, when he got to the silent. I'm going to just say that. But the clip that they that they pulled that they got they looked good. My man didn't want to congratulate Deontay. It was 19 games. I mean, give him a little pat on the helmet or something. You know what I mean? But well, let's talk, they probably I mean, got lit on the sideline together. I'm happy to see Deontay getting to work. Yep. George, you know what I mean? George Just Pickens. Know the camera's always watching. I'm sure you're not a I'm sure you're not a bad teammate. Just know the camera's always watching. It raises a lot of questions for George Pickens. We saw what he did on Instagram saying, free me. Put on the Instagram story. Yeah, it's just not a good there. look. He's not getting a lot of uh usage in the offense, and that's one of his big complaints. But I mean you talk about usage, you want to complain about the usage. We need to see it more on the field. And and the biggest thing that was all around that game and all around social media after that game was that toe drag that he was not able to get down yeah, 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 where he had yeah, yeah. multiple yards to be able in space to get that that second foot down. It doesn't get down. So, look, if you want to complain about the usage, when you're getting your, your minimal usage that you're talking about, you got to be able to make those plays. Um We'll head over now to an NFC matchup in Lambeau Field. The Packers get a big win over the Browns, the Matt Stafford less Browns. We talk about now last week with Cooper Cup and if you should continue to start him as a fantasy football owner. And without Matt Stafford, I don't know if that is is uh, the right play is to, to start Cooper Cup. Twenty to three, Packers win. Good defensive game for them. Christian Watson. It's nice to see that Jordan Love is finding that connection with with. Uh, with Christian Watson and uh, and Jordan Love, it's it's very exciting to see. Um, but this was like not a not an exciting game to watch on your on your NFL Sunday. But the Packers were able to get a good win there, uh, moved to three and five, and and a twenty to three win for the Packers. I'm, I'm like, I was dumbfounded when I found out that like seventy percent of the public was betting on the underdog Rams without Matt Stafford. Yep. That was one of the most confusing things I saw. It made me very close to bet on the Packers. Hard about on the Packers. Good win for them. Aaron Jones back moving and grooving. It shows how big he is for that offense. He's like instantly, just instantly regenerating that offense. I, I'm just confused. I, if anyone bet on the Rams, could you just explain to me why? 76% of the public, underdog Rams. I don't understand, guys. We got a lot of game. NFC East matchup now. 
Over to Foxborough, where Mac Jones throws the game ceiling interception. It was not technically his fault. It was not really a great throw, but it was tipped. Can't really blame that fully on Mac. Uh, Commanders, a great defensive win. Jahan Dotson getting in the end zone on a long ball. Sam Howell is solidifying himself as one of the top quarterbacks in the NFC East, obviously, and you can put him up there in the NFC as well, only because he's been sacked so many times. He's got a lot of pressure on him, and he's able to come out here and fight hard to put his team in chances and situations to win ball games. I get it's the Patriots, but winning in the NFL is hard, and Sam Howell is that guy, and we've said over and over, Ron Rivera and a lot of this team is saying that he's going to be the guy moving forward, and that this should be the guy that they trust as their franchise quarterback, and he's doing that. 20-17 to for the Commanders, in a big win for against the Patriots in in, uh, in Foxborough, and I had to I had to say it again. I mean, look, I get it. It's the two and seven Patriots, but winning in this league's hard. The Commanders coming off a uh, you know two weeks ago or three weeks ago lost to the Giants in a game where we thought we were going to be in shambles, and, and Washington was done. They fight hard against the Eagles and they lose. They fight hard here against Foxborough against the Patriots and they win. Good good win for the for the uh, for the Sam Howell now Washington Commanders. Yeah, good for y'all, man. You know what I mean? I got y'all quarterback. I was so confused. I think it was three, four reaction shows ago. They were getting loud. Like, people were, I was seeing on the internet were getting loud about Sam Howe. We're not confused if he was a guy or not. Let's just tone all that shit down. Poor Mac Jones. Another late game interception for Mac. That really isn't. He's going to get a lot of slack for that. Really wasn't his fault. Got my man Bill looking stressed on the sideline. Again. We all, hey. Let's not close the book on this commander's team. We're sitting at four and five. We can win away games. They're not scared to play the Eagles. I'm just saying teams of that caliber. They could they might have something to say down the stretch here with this with this NFC wildcard race. I am not ready to close Seahawks next week. So you're, your Giants. next four for the commanders. Dallas. In Seattle. I'm not ready to close the book. Home against the Giants. In Dallas, home against Miami. Tough little stretch, obviously, outside the Giants. But again, that's a divisional matchup. Or who you lost to already. Again, that's going to be without Daniel Jones. Probably Tommy DeVito starting there. And then you go in Dallas, and that's going to be a really tough one, but a scrappy one where commanders play well against the against the Dallas Cowboys, and that's always just a divisional matchup and, and that d- divisional matchup cheese that it always is, right? And then you get home against the Miami Dolphins where we can probably call that one an L. But I, I like what you're saying there. I don't think the, that we can count out the, the commanders we'll have out something yet. to say. They do have a tough couple games down the stretch, and obviously San Francisco is down there late in the season. But again, Sam Howell, Good win. Way to get a scrappy one in Foxborough. And we'll head over now to the Bears and the Saints. And the Saints are fighting and pleading for their case to win this NFC South. And a 24-17 win against the Bears. They went down late. Um, they were they were played from behind for a lot of this game. Okay. And the Bears look like Tyson Bajit. Bajit. So I got to say it right. Bajit. Was, was just turnover after turnover after turnover. And he was the, the sole reason why the Saints were able to get back in this game. The Bears, the way that they came out in this in this first half, I thought the Bears were going to say, well, there goes my Saints future. There goes my Saints future. But you know what? The defense is able to force turnovers. They're able to get a win, a big win here, 24-17, at home in the Superdome. Yeah, thank God we got a vintage Saints defense showing up because, I mean, I just don't. You know what I'm saying? They, How was this game even remotely close it with the It shouldn't have been, dude. Oh, one thing I will say, though. Does Taysom Hill get a gold jacket? <laughs> I know. I saw he that. He caught that one, yep. threw one. He just doing, he's been doing it all for so long. I, I, when did he come into the league? Like, I feel like he's been doing it all for five, six straight years, and it, it doesn't seem like he's going to stop anytime soon. He's in great shape. It seems like he's moving still just as fast as he was in year one when he had Drew Brees under center with him. Is he a golden jacket guy? Is, is Taysom Hill he, Hall of Fame? I mean, he's he's pl- he's pleading his case for what he was able to accomplish in that statistic yesterday. Ten receiving the touchdowns, only one. ten passing touchdowns, and ten rushing touchdowns is an unbelievable feat for a guy that is listed as a quarterback. Started to get switched to that tight end <laughs> role. Fantasy users were allowed to use him as a tight end position. I mean, this is a, a personal crazy, protector on punt team. He's on punt block. Like crazy he's everywhere. Career for Taysom, who is he's not the youngest guy in the book. No, okay? let's not forget. About and, he's that. Still moving. and he's still out here playing his heart out for a team that needs to win this division. And, uh, you know, we obviously can pump the brakes a little bit on the Alvin Kamara stuff where it's always like, you know, 13 catches a week, yeah. 13 catches a week. So we can pump the brakes there. Taysom Hill, I mean, <laughs> I don't know what you do if you're the Saints now because you got Taysom Hill that can run the ball. You got Alvin Kamara that can run the ball. 
I don't know <laughs> who is even like the, the, the guy that we're going to hand the ball off to every single week. But again, a sloppy game for the Bears. And and to your point, there is no reason with three interceptions from Bajan, there's no reason the Saints should have been in this game. Remotely close. Let's move over to one of the top teams in the AFC. The Baltimore Ravens moved to seven and two at home. A dominant win, 37 to 3 over the Seahawks on Odell Beckham Jr.'s birthday. Scores his first touchdown as a Baltimore Raven and his best game in a Ravens uniform. Big win for the Ravens, huge dominant win, solidifying themselves as one of the top three if not the top two in the AFC. And this Ravens offense makes a statement. My favorite part about doing a show is when you have criticism about a player or a team in the next three, four weeks, they just completely flip the script. When you, like, it was, I don't, be honest, it's almost time, it's beginning of the week, or beginning of the year. Like I said, it was going to be the same shit with the Ravens. It was going to get real loud. I was expecting people to start getting loud on Lamar. Like, how things started. I was, I was getting real scared. People were going to get loud about Odell. We are just fine. We are more than fine. Like, Kenny said, we're a Super Bowl contender. I think there's going to be, I don't know. I, people were talking about the Bengals talk. I don't know if the Bengals going to have something for this. I think the Ravens have been a, not a, uh, I, don't, I don't know what the word is. But I feel like it's been, a, like, the North has been a complete, a, a really even division. But I feel like since Joe Burrow came over the last couple of years, it's been the Bengals. It's been the Bengals' world, and I think this is one of the teams that probably took it the most personal because they have they've had their squads over the years. I love to see them moving and grooving. I don't know what's going to happen on the stretch. I think I like them over the Bengals. We're gonna I have a I fun do. stretch because off, off the edge, off the underdog edge factor, they've been put down the last couple of years. I don't know. It's just gonna be a fun stretch for the Ravens uh, down this wild stretch of of a season for the rest of the year for them. In, in, in two weeks, they, they're home against Cincinnati. You look later in the year. Then they go back-to-back back in Jacksonville, in San Francisco, and then home against Miami. That's that's now we're talking in December now. But those are those are three big, big games. And after you put the, the combination of home against the Bengals in there, you could see if the, if the Bengals keep winning. Obviously, Kenny was talking about it, four in a row. And you get a couple losses on this schedule, Bengals might be able to sneak away on this division. Don't know if that's going to be the case, but you look down the stretch for the Ravens, I don't think they're going to be able to let that happen. But we're going to be a, in, a, in a fun situation for I who's going to come out on top no, of that division. Going, I think the Bengals are going to make it come out like the last, couple, last week or two for sure. Just that start's going to be brutal for them. All right, uh, moving now to, I guess it's Kenny Moore's Indianapolis Colts. Two pick sixes. Wow, look at that. First time since 2021 in the NFL that that has happened from our Kenny Moore. Eagles were actually looking to get him in uh, in the right before the trade deadline. Colts win this one in Carolina, making Carolina and uh, Bryce Young 1-7, and 27-13, backed by an unbelievable defensive performance. Wish I had the Colts on my uh, my defense slide in fantasy this week. That's actually, yeah, like, I mean, damn. Because... Both those pick sixes were so big. This game was actually much closer than it looked. Because <laughs> every single one of those pick sixes were on decent drives. They look okay. I'm not saying they're going to win this game, but maybe it could have been one of those, you know, 10-13. We might lose in the last drive. But the two pick sixes, again, and the problems that I said on the first reaction show, just looks like Bryce Young's not seeing guys. And I don't think this is going to be a reoccurring. It might be a reoccurring thing for him this year. Like I said, it might be, he might have the Drew Brees effect. Drew Brees was super smart coming to the league. <laughs> Seriously, super smart coming to the league. Has trouble seeing over the line. Took him a year, two, three years. By year five, Drew Brees was killing. I think Bryce Young's going to have the same kind of trajectory. Just be patient with the guy. Go in for the Colts, though. You know I mean, Kenny Moore out there making plays. Go wait for him. One of, one of the more fun guys in the league. Whenever you hear Kenny Moore talk, you know I mean, he's one of those guys I like I like when I see his personality come out. And a great the, man off the field as facts, well. We've seen what he's 100%. done to contribute to his community shout off out, the shout field. Shout out K Moore. No boy. Shout out Kenny Moore. Uh, actually reached out to him. We, we, we did, we did, we did. I remember that. Nah, so we have a little love for Kenny Moore. Uh, okay, last few games here are, uh, we did touch on it briefly with Kenny, but Arthur Smith and the Falcons host the Vikings where our man, Joshua Dobbs, Joshua Dobbs comes in, doesn't know any of the players' names. He flies in on Tuesday, fifth team to learn a new offense from. He says, you know what? I'm not going to play this week. I just got here, so I'll wait till next week to learn their names. Turns out, he's got to come in and play. He's taking snaps on the sideline for the first time to learn the cadence of how he can get the ball out and into his hands so he can make plays. Leads this team to a win, a game-winning drive late in the game. The Vikings win this one huge, 31-28. to I don't understand why we are not giving more praise to Joshua Dobbs and why 
I don't know how the Cardinals said, oh, we reviewed the tape. And we we said he was going to play for us, but then we reviewed the tape, and you know what? He's he's not the guy, so we're going to dump him off into another team. Uh, that's the biggest fuck you, and I'm so happy that you did that, and that performance in a big 31-28 comeback win against the Falcons in Atlanta. I'm a, I mean, they are the professionals, and I, I've definitely sat on the couch, and I definitely stopped playing football a long time ago, but to say we reviewed the tape and then found out that he wasn't the guy from the tape, to me, is insane, because... The eye test in every single, not every single game, but majority of the games this year for Josh Dodds have been this guy's, I mean, he's pretty damn good. And then if you look at like his his turnovers, I think he has like four or five picks. But if you look at the games that the Cardinals been playing in, his turnovers have become in late. They're down 14, forcing the ball down the field. He, bro, he has incredible legs. Seems like an incredibly smart quarterback. Another thing too, he seems like an actual leader. These guys had no idea who he was. Had all four linemen. Next to him with the center, he was taking the, taking the snaps, listening to his cadence. I'm pretty sure it was an O-line coach. He's talking to him. They're all just looking at him in the eyes. He just seems like one of those guys. Now, he's not – hasn't got the respect he deserves, I think. Can you name 32 quarterbacks better than him, though? Can you? Is there 32 guys better than Josh Dobbs in the league? Definitely not this year. Like, this guy's a starting quarterback, which is crazy to say. And if, and if he's not going to be a starter, he at least deserves to be, like, a top tier. Like, I would um, – I love Marcus Mariota. But imagine if that was Jalen Hurts' backup. Like, oh my God. If that was Daniel Jones' backup. Yeah, facts. Oh my goodness. Like, we're, we, a lot of teams missed the hit engine and Josh Dobbs. I'm happy he's doing his thing. Another whale in this game missed. Johnny Smith getting 100 yards and a touchdown. Yep. That's what's going on. That's what's going on on that. Yeah, yeah that was that big 60 yard like, play. I mean, we had the shine light on, too. B. J. Robinson had him for over 58 yards, 58 and a half, finished with 51. And late in the game, you are just feeding Tyler Algier. Why? I don't know. Why draft him if you're not going to use him? I don't understand it. And I feel bad for anybody that drafted B. John Robinson because it's not his fault. He's just not getting, he's not getting the ball. He's not. What, what, why, can we talk about when the Falcons were, like, just cheering? Like, we got our guy. We drafted our guy. And now what? We look six months later, and he's barely getting the ball. The The performance that we've seen when he touches the ball is incredible. We've seen the freak athlete that he can be when he touches the football. But he's not touching the football. I, I would be, uh, if I'm a Falcons fan, I am just, I am unbelievably upset with why our number one guy, our number one pick in this year's draft is not, Getting the football, like the only, re- I think the only thing, the only thing that could happen that could justify the split carries the way it is, which is why in the beginning of the season I wasn't as upset about it going on, is because okay, if we don't expect to be really good, what's the point of giving them thirty a game? But if we're, I mean, we are the thick of a of a division race. We are dev- like, on, to be honest, my. At times, like, the best team in that division, we can win now. Like, he needs to be – we need to be up in it. I understand the beginning of the season, if you want to be careful, see what we got. But once you see we have a team that can win now, we got to – It's I mean? crazy that the, oh, no. the Falcons <laughs> needed that game more than the Vikings. And it says a lot because the Vikings have been getting scrappy wins to stay within a division <sighs> race. Obviously, not enough for the Lions, but enough <laughs> no, to no. stay in a wild card spot where Falcons needed this – Way more because yeah. they're in a way tougher fight. Um, so I mean, again, like Artie, Artie Smith, we I can just can't wait to hear the frustration that you're going to talk about on Thursday on the Pat McAfee show. Uh, I had Falcons money line in a parlay. Obviously, that wasn't the only leg that busted it, but did not think they that this was going to happen. Um, you know, and I don't think that the Vikings win this game if if you know no. if Dobbs doesn't no, have to come in. No, yeah. So I don't think that would happen. Our last game in Week Nine. Waited a while to touch on it because we did briefly touch on it with Kenny. Uh, The Raiders and newly head coach Antonio Pierce, former former NFL Giant, former Super Bowl champion with the Giants, Antonio Pierce leads his Raiders to a dominant, dominant, dominant 30-6 win over the Giants. Uh, We lose Daniel Jones as Giants fans. Is that the last game he ever played? Don't know. The rumors there, torn ACL. I don't know. I don't want to go that far. They're gonna waste another draft pick on a quarterback. Do you when you when you gave him 160 million, 82 guaranteed? Do you even go that far? I don't know what Kenny said. If they get that draft pick at that high up and those two guys are sitting there, Drake May, Caleb Williams, do you pass up on that? It's nah. like the questions are gonna to start to stem. The biggest thing that pissed me off though is hey guys, I understand you got a new coach. I understand you had a fun win. I understand all that. But you guys 
yes, you didn't win the fucking Super Bowl, and you damn near didn't win a playoff game. Why in God's name are we smoking cigars in the locker room after beating the now 2-7 and seven New York Giants? I'm a New York Giants fan. So, is that biased for me to do that? If the Giants won that game, if the Giants win next week, if the Giants find a way to win next week, and there's no Daniel Jones, that's a fun win. Just lost our, our quarterback to an ACL. We find a win. We gonna go smoke cigars in the locker room? I don't fucking think so. This team, Raiders now, I mean, that's a good win. You move to four and five, but there's there's no context, reason. Oh, my God. Context, I don't give a fuck about a context because we're not smoking cigars. Yes, you are. Context is extremely important. Josh McDaniels just got paid not too long ago. Paid. His team was three and five going into this week. They were a playoff team or lat one week away, one went away from being a playoff team last year, if I'm not mistaken. They're three and five. Josh McDaniels gets fired that quick. That should just tell you how bad things were in that locker room. When you got a coach that got paid that much money and he getting fired week eight after the year y'all had last year, has to say a shit ton. You get AP coming in, you blow a team out. Like it's from a player's perspective, from playing a game and being around coaches that were dog shit. There is literally no better feeling. There's probably 52 guys in total. Every single player in that locker room just felt like they had a monkey off their back. Probably felt like they couldn't really play for real. Like that shit does a lot. And it's crazy because they had a, a uh, post game speech and people were talking about because Tay Adams had a lot of sound bites earlier in the year that didn't sound too good. Like he just didn't. He didn't sound like he was invested at all. Then I watched like video of the, of the post game speech that AP's given and he's the main one right next to him, locked in, nodding his head like. I understand what you're saying from John's fan perspective, but that probably did just so much from. They're probably like, "Oh my god, like we can just fucking play regular football now. Our coach is cool. Like, yeah, we gonna party tonight because it's been a long eight weeks." And you got to give some credit to Max Crosby on that performance. He's a dog. And He's but, a dog. I mean, <laughs> for the funny standpoint, though, um, did you happen to see what he said on Twitter? <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I was not what, what people on Twitter were saying. <laughs> we're not going to talk about that. Uh, there was just a video of Max Crosby, and everybody who saw the video knows what we're talking about. But we're talking about more of the uh, performance that he had. Um, a lot of sacks in this game, and and a game that they they just were the, flat out the better team. Lose Daniel Jones. Don't know really where you go uh, from here, but Giants fans are in shambles, and everyone's like, well, you know, we're going to get the draft pick now, so Caleb well, Williams, you, uh, welcome to the team. I'm not a big person on, like, quitting on the year. Football only comes around, um, you know, there's only there's only so much time that you can watch football in a season and, and to just quit on the team. I still want to root for this team to win, so that's kind of where I am, standpoint-wise, as a fan. I want to root for them to win. I, like, if you want to tank for a draft pick, that's well, just nah, not what nah, I do. Now you can just take Giants money line every week at insane odds and have a blast. <laughs> yeah, and then just lose all my coin for fuck, that. Fuck it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for being here and joining us in week nine of our week nine NFL reactions. First week with Kenny, you will see him every single week to break down a couple games for the remainder of the NFL season. If you did watch this episode on YouTube, make sure to drop a like, comment, and do not forget to hit that subscribe button so you're not missing out on any new podcasts and YouTube videos during this NFL season. And for our audio listeners, we appreciate you, our loyal, loyal audio listeners. You know we love you. Uh, Apple Podcasts and Spotify, drop those ratings. They do help us a long, long way. And if you do want to connect with us on our social media platforms, please do, do sure, please, what am I going to say here? Please make sure to do so. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, Twitter is at ADED Podcast. Our Instagram is at ADED Pod. And our, inst- and our TikTok is simply the name of the show. Again, another day where I kind of fucked up the outro there, but we appreciate you guys. Uh, another fun week nine for the boys. And it's finally in the books. You've been listening and watching to the All Day Every Day Show with All Day AJ and Manny Ruffin. Have a great rest of your week. And we, you will be seeing us next Monday with Kill Kenny, Kenny McAndrews. <laughs>